Hello all. Today we will look at systemic oxygenation system and logistics involved. We will understand and connect oxygen delivery, consumption and extraction ratios and relate it more clinically for help in critical care management. Let's start then. First four stages of oxygen cascade have already been covered in previous episode. Link in top right corner. Quickly going through the stage 5 in the arteries, oxygenated blood from end capillaries forms pulmonary veins that carry it to the left atrium. Mixed in with a small fraction of shunted blood, the arterial oxygen content is some of hemoglobin bound oxygen and dissolved oxygen as explained in detail in previous episode, link in top right corner. So oxygen pressure in arteries is around 92 millimeters of mercury, slightly less than the pulmonary arteries due to mixture of shunted blood. So judging from arterial oxygen content equation, any reduction in hemoglobin or abnormal hemoglobin or fall in pressure of oxygen from alveoli to arteries would cause hypoxia. If hemoglobin quantity is reduced, we need to transfuse packed RCCs. Conservative approach says in normal patient, hemoglobin below 8 and in cardiac case below 10 grams per dl warrants RCC transfusion for better oxygen delivery. On the flip side, overtransfusion is also worrisome because it can cause increased viscosity in blood which would reduce the lamina flow through the capillaries and that would compromise oxygen delivery as well. So a balance between conservative and liberal approach has to be established. Next, just like convective mass transport system in lungs, the heart's pumping effect helps in bulk flow of oxygen throughout the body also called the cardiac output which is heart rate into stroke volume. In resting 70 kg adult, it is around 5 liters per minute, but a fit heart can raise the cardiac output 4 times. We will discuss the significance of this rise in cardiac output in a few minutes. Let's come now to tissue level and discuss the logistics and the oxygen supply chain. Imagine how the goods are transported. You order or demand something online. The factory manufactures the goods based on demand and hands it off to the delivery service. Vehicle carries the good via roads to the community of the people. For example, there are 100 goods in a vehicle and within community, Adam here ordered 5 boxes, Ali needed 10 and Sam ordered 20 boxes. There are no warehouses to store the boxes, so the vehicle has 70 boxes left as it returns back to the factory to refill more. The body operates on the same principle. The manufacturing occurs in the lungs, the goods is of course hemoglobin, carrying oxygen as it reaches the heart that propels the delivery services through the roads of arteries to reach the organs and peripheries where each organ has its own regional requirement of oxygen based on its workload. So in arteries, saturation of oxygen was 100% and after giving away oxygen to peripheries, the blood returning in veins is 75% saturated. Any delivery system has two key components. Number one, the vehicle of transport and number two, the efficiency of the company to be punctual, right? For heart, the vehicle of transport is hemoglobin carrying oxygen goods and efficiency of drive depends on the cardiac output and flow generated by the heart. So delivery of oxygen to tissues is arterial oxygen content times cardiac output, right? This is why anemic patients with low hemoglobin and reduced arterial oxygen content develop tachycardia and raise the cardiac output in order to keep the delivery of oxygen constant. So delivery of oxygen is arterial oxygen content into cardiac output into 10. This 10 is essential to convert the delivery from milliliters of oxygen per deciliter to milliliters of oxygen per liter per minute. So in normal case, we have said in last video, arterial oxygen content is around 20 milliliters of oxygen per deciliter into 5 liters per minute of cardiac output into 10. So around 1000 ml of oxygen is delivered per minute to the body, right? This is in resting state. So what type of hypoxia can occur at this level? The stagnant or circulatory hypoxia. If there is any reduction in heart rate or stroke volume, it would reduce the cardiac output and therefore delivery of oxygen. For example, hypovolemia can cause reduced stroke volume. 
So now you know why body causes tachycardia in hypovolemia. To try to keep the cardiac output stable, to try and keep the delivery of oxygen going. Cardiogenic shock, distributive shocks where delivery is compromised by regional low pressures, obstructive shocks such as tamponade where filling is compromised and stroke volume is reduced. All these reduce the cardiac output and thereby delivery of oxygen, treating the cause, increasing the contractility and volume replacements to optimize stroke volume are the answer. I have come across OBS cases and postpartum hemorrhages with patients having hemoglobin as low as 4 still surviving through good volume repletion. So cardiac output gets delivery going and this buys us some time until the blood can be infused and preventing deaths. Another worth mentioning example is sometimes traffic jams cause delay in delivery and if roads are blocked for days then delivery may be cancelled. In body, DVT and thrombotic occlusions can cause it and if not relieved quickly they can cause permanent ischemia and death of tissue cells, right? Let's understand now the oxygen consumption and extraction ratio at tissue level. Just like in a community every individual has his own set of needs of goods organs behave in similar manner. For example, kidneys extract only 8% of the oxygen from renal flow, while brain demands 34% oxygen for its supply. Muscles demand 30% or even higher based on the level of exercise, and liver takes away 18% oxygen from its supply. So regional variations of oxygen demands, but it's easier to see global consumption or total consumption simply by comparing the saturation of hemoglobin in arteries and saturation of hemoglobin in the veins, right? So VO2 or oxygen consumption depends on blood flow, meaning cardiac output, and the difference in oxygen content between the arteries and the veins, which would reveal how much oxygen was taken up by the tissues, right? And multiply it with 10 with the same principle as stated for delivery of oxygen formula. So now, further opening up the oxygen content equations for arteries and veins, if you see the hemoglobin level and hemoglobin capacity for oxygen at 1.34 ml per grams would stay constant in both equations. So separating the common indices, we are left with this equation. Cardiac output into hemoglobin into 1.34 into arterial oxygen saturation minus venous oxygen saturation into 10. Now, if you are a clinician, you can get arterial saturation through pulse oximeter or ABGs and venous saturation most accurate is the pulmonary artery level, also called the mixed venous oxygen. But for practical purposes, it is easier getting SCVO2 from central vein tip at right atrium junction. The difference is not much between the two. So in normal resting person, if you see arteries carrying 1000 milliliters of oxygen per minute, and 100% saturation and after consumption veins having 75% or around 750 milliliters of oxygen per minute. So there is around 25% oxygen consumed by body or 1000 minus 750 equals 250 milliliters of oxygen per minute, right? And this 250 ml of oxygen per minute is the bare minimal oxygen requirement by the 70 kg adult as metabolic demand of oxygen and this is called 1 met. So, for a sitting person having 1 met oxygen demand, body is delivering oxygen at 1000 ml per minute, almost 4 times more than required. But this is where it gets testing. What if the person is playing football? Now the exercising muscles and the body is demanding 10 met or 10 into 250 equals 2500 ml of oxygen is required per minute. And that's where the body responds by increasing the cardiac output by both increased heart rate and contractility to raise stroke volume so that the delivery of oxygen is higher than the demand by the body. And this is what it means by cardiopulmonary reserves. Does your heart have enough stability to satisfy the demand of working body? Athletes have strong hearts that pump and contract and raise this cardiac output with larger stroke volumes and larger left ventricles. But if you would ask a cardiac patient to play football, his heart will not be able to sustain the rising demand of oxygen by body and ultimately it would cause hypoxia globally including his own heart's demand leading to ischemia and even arrest.
So you see hypoxia is really a relative term and it is dictated by oxygen delivery and oxygen requirement of the body. Finally, let's talk about oxygen extraction ratios. So oxygen extraction ratio is the oxygen consumed divided by delivery of oxygen. So you see from equation the oxygen extraction increases whenever consumption is increased or delivery is reduced, right? If we draw a graph between delivery of oxygen and consumption under normal situations at delivery of 1000 milliliters of oxygen per minute and consumption of body at 1 met of 250 ml of oxygen per minute, saturation is 100% in arteries and 75% in veins with 25% oxygen extracted by the tissues, right? When delivery of oxygen starts reducing either by decrease in cardiac output or arterial oxygen content, a famine hit situation occurs and tissues start looting extra oxygen for their preservation. This way they try to keep the oxygen consumption stable despite the reduced delivery. Until the red dot point is reached where tissues have reached their maximal oxygen extraction capacity of 50% which is reflected in venous oxygen saturation below 50% now. Beyond this point then the oxygen consumption becomes supply dependent so further reduction in delivery would also reduce the consumption of oxygen and shift the balance towards anaerobic metabolism. In other words, hypoxia and rising lactate levels. This point of delivery is called the critical delivery point and physicians can observe it either by mixed venous oxygen saturation or lactate levels. The average extraction by all the organs is around 25% and it can be raised to 50%. But the heart is already operating at maximum 50% level. So it's already supply dependent, right? There is very little room or window with us if delivery and supply of oxygen to the heart is compromised. So cytotoxic hypoxia occurs at tissue level, especially in sepsis and cyanide poisoning, where the tissue is unable to extract this extra oxygen or consume oxygen. Without oxygen, lactate would increase due to anaerobic metabolism and it can be reflected in mixed venous oxygen levels because now the oxygen is not be consumed so the oxygen will be shifted from the arteries without consumption into the veins causing increased mixed venous oxygen saturation that's it for today do give us a feedback for revision of mcqs soon thank you